good morning, good afternoon, good evening everybody and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Golf. We're out here today at Saddle Rock in Aurora, Colorado. Well, kind of a suburb of Denver if you will. So yeah, uh, it's going to be a 9 hole vlog today. I thought that I was playing 18, but apparently the tee time I made, though I thought it was an 18 hole tee time, it ended up being a 9 hole tee time. So yeah, that's unfortunate. So I'm not going to get to show you all the holes. So hopefully one of these days I'll be back out here, maybe a little earlier in the season, so that I can get in 18 for you, show you what the back nine looks like. But, oh well. So, anyway, out here with Austin today. Your boy! Yeah! You remember him from a few videos earlier this season? So yeah, this first hole, big old par 5 straight off the bat, about 500 yards to get up on the screen from the blue tees that we'll be playing right up over there. So, yeah, I mean, pretty wide open fairway. Smack one out there, you can pretty much play whatever you want. No reason not to hit driver, so that's probably what we're going to be doing. Let's get up there and check it out. Starting off with a par, your boy here bringing it home with the epic two putt. <laughs> so here we are in the second hole, about 300 yards from the from the blue tees they got us on here today. On the car is 350, but on my watch it's saying uh, only 302. So I don't know. I, I guess I trust my watch, the GPS. So it's a dog leg left. The play if you're going to pound driver is right over that dirty hill right there. And if you're going to play it safe, then obviously just float like a I don't know, maybe like a 7-iron or something out to the right and probably have about 100 yards on home. So, I think uh, your boy here is pumping three wood. So, let's give it a whack, see what happens. <laughs> Oh, 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 
right everybody so here we are third hole so kind of a kind of a large par four here about 375 yards from those blues will be playing right up there to get up on this green uphill a little bit of a dog leg left uh, wide enough green to be comfortable with driver but not a whole lot of room to miss in either direction so you'd probably be forgiven for playing a fairway metal or a long iron up here and just give yourself a little bit of a longer shot up onto that green and two so I'm um, probably gonna let Austin play first and depending on what he does will depend on what I hit let's get up there give it a crack check it out everybody well that was an unfortunate bogey on the last run we just picked up and called it a bogue but what are you gonna do so this one shorter par 4 only about 335 to get up on this green a little bit of a dog leg left so but kind of tight fairway you definitely want to try to stay to the left but it does kind of bowl in if you happen to miss slightly right so you'll probably be safe you'll just have a long shot in so yep just an iron shot it's really really necessary here pump one out there to be safe so, let's give it a crack, check it out.
Alright everybody, welcome back to the fifth hole. A little par three here over the gully. So, what do I got on the watch about? I'm about level with the tee box right now. And I got 142 to the middle on the watch. So, but a little bit uphill, slightly. So probably playing about 150, maybe. And 126 to the front, probably playing around 136. So, uh, full gap wedge, maybe half a pitching wedge would be smart here. If you, if you miss right, you're really going to have to pop it up over that tree there. Get it up in the air, make sure you got the loft. But then it's got to pretty much drop straight down after that. So, yeah, the play here, stay safe. <clears throat> Left side of the green, which means pin seeking is going to be kind of hard here unless you fade it on in. So, let's get up there, give it a crack, see what happens. everybody here we are on the sixth hole big par five dogs to the right for the green right at the end until then it's pretty straight up so downhill wide enough fairway to entice one to hit driver which I might very well do <clears throat> but I mean you can really hit anything here and pretty much get home in three so yeah wouldn't worry about it too much because with how downhill it is you're gonna get a lot of roll off of whatever you hit as long as you got some head spin on it so, yeah, let's give it a crack and check it out. See if we can get this 554 yard hole done.
everybody, so here we are on the seventh hole. 322 yard par four, uphill the whole way. It's kind of a narrow fairway. So yeah, if you're gonna take driver here, make sure you're liking it today, which I might do, because I'm actually hitting that thing pretty all right. So, but pretty straight up, and then it kind of veers off to the right a little bit for the green. So let's give it a whack, see what happens. everybody so here we are on the eight hole little par three downhill 186 true 170 with the slope so says the laser so taking a nine iron at it and uh, I think my boy is taking a seven iron give it a crack see what happens <laughs> And here we are on the ninth hole in the final hole for this well one part <laughs> Out here at Saddle Rock in Aurora, Colorado. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Midgard Golf Throw us a like and a subscribe if you feel and if not, thanks for showing up anyway So this final ninth hole here about 396 to get up on that green on the other side of the lake So obviously ungettable unless you're Kyle Berkshire. So just gonna pump a nice easy drive out there Keep it in the fairway and give us about 1 to 150 in. Let's check it out.
so here's the end of, unfortunately, just our nine holes out at Saddle Rock in Aurora, Colorado. Up there, close to Denver, in that sort of greater area. So, but anyway, still a beautiful day out there to go play. Definitely going to have to go out there again at some point and do another vlog and vlog all 18 for you because the back nine is pretty cool, actually. There's some, um, there's some challenging holes out there, definitely some more trees to deal with, and then it kind of opens up a little bit, you know, in parts, kind of goes in and out of the, the forest vibe, if you will. But, anyway, what'd you think, man? What'd you think of the track? Um, well, I think it was pretty good. I think the price point was excellent. Uh, it's for what you pay for, you get a lot out of it. Um, I would say it's 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 technical, but it's easy to easy to read. Is a you know fairly fairly in that kind of ballpark. Um, there's more sand than water in it, and that was a unique change of pace versus other courses where it's like a lot of a lot of water. This time it's more sand, and uh, that that does add a little bit more of a different kind of challenge. Um, so. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a lot of bunkers everywhere, that's for sure. And, yeah, at least the front nine there, pretty pretty wide open in terms of being able to see what what's going on everywhere. The views are gorgeous out there, by the way. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. yeah, especially between, like, what, holes three and, shoot, like three and seven. Like, there's yeah. a lot of views all the way through there. I think even yeah. on two there was a good view. On the second hole. Yeah, yeah, two kind of looking backwards. Yeah. yeah, there's there was good views out that way too. Yeah, really beautiful. I mean, I totally agree. So far as the pr price point's concerned, I mean, they do military pricing out there, which is really cool. So the military pricing's twenty eight bucks. Uh, apparently, it's only active or retirees. Um, let's see here, but then. Beyond that, and that well, that was twenty bucks or twenty eight bucks for nine holes, I guess. So I, I'm not sure what it is for eighteen. Then is it, I think it's like forty online, if I remember seeing it right. But yeah, so we learned that today, and that's kind of a new policy that so we expected to be playing eighteen. Because mm -hmm. on the online booking thing, it had those prices in the eighteen hole column, but yeah, they just need to fix that apparently to. Make it known. No, no, this pricing is only for nine holes, so that wasn't really clear on the website. But you know, to be fair, the guys said that was a new policy just in like the last couple of weeks, so I should expect that to change pretty quickly. But then, um, let's see here, like thirty-one fifty for just regular rate for I guess nine holes. Yeah. And then I think it was fifty-four something like that for eighteen holes, just regular rates. And it's a muni, so city-owned course up in the you know Denver area there, conglomerated with like four or five other courses that they also control. Now, I forget what all of those are, but they're scattered throughout the city. Mm -hmm. So it's probably how they get away with such cheap rates. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> cheap, cheap. Yeah, but I mean, for what you're paying for, you really do get a lot of bang for your buck at Saddle Rock. Honestly, I mean. If that course was privately owned, you'd be paying a lot more for it, Certainly. guarantee it. Mm -hmm. And they could get it. It would be worth it, mm -hmm. for sure. So, if you're in the Aurora area, I highly recommend checking out uh, checking out Saddle Rock. <laughs> getting getting your money's worth. Uh, so far as the practice facility goes, the practice facility I think is great. Um, you know, great driving range, nice and long. You don't have to worry about not being able to pull out driver like you do it. Some courses around here in this area. They ask you not to hit driver on the driving range, which is kind of an oxymoron to me. But <laughs> just because it's a short range, and I'm sure, you know, a lot of you avid golfers out there have experienced the same here and there. But they've got a nice long range. You can bust whatever you want out there. And a uh, nice big putting green. And I thought the, the putting green was pretty close to what the greens were actually rolling out on the course. I would say so. I would say yeah. they're very reflective. Mm -hmm. Both in speed and difficulty, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the greens were tough reads out there. I mean, there's very subtle breaks on on those greens. Yeah, that are gonna eat your lunch if you're not really getting on your belly and looking at the ground, really. And rolling pretty quick. So, what were the, I mean, shoot, downhill putts were definitely rolling super fast today. Uphill, uphill slows. Probably, 
Well, I mean, I, I hit a couple of uphill putts that flew on past even too. If you give it the slightest yeah. chance, it's going to cut away. Yeah, oh yeah. So I'd probably have to say they were rolling somewhere around a 12 today. 11, 12, somewhere around there, but quick, for sure. Yeah. And uh, yeah, like Austin was saying, definitely a lot of bunkers out there. But, and we were in a few of those bunkers, so we can comment on that. I thought the sand was actually pretty good. The sand was good. Yeah. Yeah. Easy to get out of, easy to play, didn't eat your club alive, and it wasn't hard pan. It was kind of right there in that happy medium right there in between. So that was, that was nice. But, yeah, not a whole lot of water. I don't think there was any water, actually, save for the ninth hole. Like it, that big old was, lake on the ninth. It was either the eighth or the ninth. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, there was one water trap. And, yeah. Um, the other group Water got trap. caught in that. The other, the other, the other group got caught in that, but uh, yeah. but we did not sink any balls this time. No, we didn't. Yep, yep. No balls were wet today out of our pocket. That's for sure. But yeah, yeah. The the couple that we were playing with today, a couple of young kids, which is so awesome. You know, a young man and his girlfriend. I'm guessing that was his girlfriend. Yeah, we can assume. I think there was a sweetheart and something thrown in there a couple times, but yeah. yeah. Anyway, so cute. Yeah, couple getting out there to play and that uh, looked around high school age. So yeah, very neat. But yeah, I think she put one in the drink, but the kid didn't. The the no. the young man. Yeah. No. Yeah, he was actually playing pretty good golf today. But anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> so not not a whole lot of water hazard to, to worry about. A lot of native, though. A lot of native land. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you get hung up in that stuff, that's gone. You ain't, you ain't finding it out of there. Yeah. I would liken the native areas out there to kind of like Pine Creek out here in town. I think I've already vlogged Pine Creek and put that up on the channel. If I haven't, I really need to. But So that's right here in Colorado Springs. One of the nicer courses in the springs. Actually in the city. There's not many of them. <laughs> you should, kind of in Colorado Springs, you got to venture out a little ways in order to find a nice track. But, um, yeah, and you know, recalling the back nine, I can't recall a whole lot of water on the back nine either. I think there's just not a whole lot of water to have to deal with on the course. So, it's actually kind of nice if you tend to be the kind of golfer where it seems like your club will just send a ball to the water no matter where it is, so. I'm not gonna have a lot of that to deal with out there, but a lot of bunkers to to find yourself in, and you, you probably will. They're in <laughs> they're in very well. There's a lot of them again, and they're in, in spots that are easy to get yourself into. I remember a couple of the holes actually is surrounded by bunkers for the for the green. Oh yeah, so, uh -huh. yeah, complete surround. Yeah, and protected so on all sides by bunkers. So it's either get set yeah. up or hit a bunker. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and they're still on COVID rules up there right now. I mean, what, it's it's uh, September 25th, so there was no rakes for the bunkers, which was unfortunate, so it's like, all right, come on now. Can't can we get over this at this point? But it is what it is. So at least right at the moment, they still don't have rakes for the bunkers. I'm like, well, you know, I kind of like a, a raked bunker. I, don't know. I think we all do. Um, well, let's see here. So far as the, the rest of the course, so we went over the practice facility. The chipping green there is actually really long. They cut the chipping green kind of fairway length. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, and it's right there outside the back patio of the clubhouse. So great, great little restaurant there. And the mm -hmm. bar, eh, I kind of got to give the bar like a, kind of got to give them a C. Yeah. Like a, yeah. Maybe a C plus for service. But service was great, so we we went and checked out the bar, had a drink. But yeah, they they didn't have a lot of stuff on hand to make some what I would call sort of baseline drinks that you would expect at a bar. You know, I go to a bar, I expect them to have materials to make an old fashioned and you know, things like that, and they didn't have that. So anyway. What are you gonna do? But for simple drinks, yeah, they they'll, they'll have what you need there. If you're not bougie like me, I guess you <laughs> gotta have gotta have my fancy drinks. But yeah, but the service there was great. The staff great. Um, shoot, we didn't have. We didn't, I mean, the the marshal. 
He drove was, by one time. Yeah, like that's, it was the same guy as the starter, though. It was like he was half starter, half marshal. But, yeah, I mean, drove by once or twice, I think. Yeah. I think he drove by twice, but didn't really say much. Yeah, he was a nice dude. So, yeah, the staff there, through and through, pretty good guys, I'd say. Not really, not so great that they make you feel like you're at home, but certainly far from rude as well. So, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll give them a B. How's that? Yeah, because good staff, professional, good service, but, yeah, to get that A rating from me as a staff, you really got to make me feel like, you know, Hey, like it's Cheers, right? Like, you know, so glad to see you, so on and so forth. So, because I've seen some staff like that at various courses around this area, and then they really go the extra mile to make you feel at home. And yeah, you know, you're not going to get that at Saddle Rock, but it is a good staff anyway. Yeah. Um, the patrons there? I mean, I thought the patrons were just fine. But they kind of kept to themselves, yeah. really, and we we really didn't converse with them much. We had apparently some pros playing right in front of us that the, the starter had told us come coming off the first two bucks. Like, yep, three of the four guys who are out in front of you are actually uh, like PGA pros. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. Not like tour professional players, but, um, but you know, golf pros. So I think one of them is, was a course owner somewhere and two others were... Uh, head pros at a couple of other courses in the area, so yeah, you get some pretty skilled sticks out there who tend to frequent that track, which kind of speaks to its its challenge level, I guess, because you know while you can really see what's going on out there, I mean the fairways aren't that wide. I mean you know I'd I'd call them just wide enough to the point where you want to break out driver all the time, but not so wide so that if you don't hit that driver right, or any club for that matter, that you're going to be forgiven. Like, you will quickly be in some tall rough or out in the weeds if, you, uh, if you're if you hitting bad shots out there, that's for sure. So, there's some challenge level to that. But just the right amount of challenge level. We're not, you know, not hotel hallway fairways, but certainly far from big old link style fairways too. Like, like you might find out at Bandon Dunes and whatnot. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Is that um, what else? I, th I, th I think that's about it. You know, as far as course aspects, you got anything to add? Uh, I think we nailed it. Yeah. Know, to, uh... Yeah. Well, that's it. Well, thank you so much again for coming and watching another episode of Midgard Golf. And again, throw us a like and a subscribe if you feel if you're liking the content. And, as always, if there's a course in the area that you want us to go vlog <clears throat> and bring you back a review of everything we thought about it, throw it down in the comments. Yeah, happy to look into it. You know, so long as it's not a, a crazy drive, if it's, if it's somewhere real prestigious in this greater area, then I might make a weekend of it and go out there and play it anyway. But, yeah, if it's anywhere in the central Colorado area and you want us to go check it out, yeah. I'm always looking for stuff that people want to see. Because if people want to see it, I probably want to see it too. So <laughs> I'll go play it for you, and I'll let you know what I think. So, yeah, throw that in the comments if you feel. Or if you just want to see um, different kind of content altogether, let us know. Let us know what you want. But apart from that, hope you enjoyed the video, and have a lovely day.